Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk about otosclerosis. Otosclerosis is a not so common middle ear pathology, not nearly as common as otitis media in children. Otitis media hits kids by the bucket loads, but otosclerosis is very different. The name otosclerosis, let's begin with that, rather an odd name. Sclerosis means hardening. Uh, when you're thinking of otosclerosis as a pathology, however, it's actually a soft neoplasm, a soft growth of bone around the foot plate of the stapes, the last of the middle ear ossicular chain. Right where the stapes enters the cochlea through the oval window, that area becomes overgrown with a soft porous neoplasm of, of uh, soft porous tissue. And it's, it's hereditary. It hits Caucasians more than Asians and those of African origin. It tends to, to strike adults, young adults. Chances are if mom or dad has otosclerosis, one of the kids will have it too. So there's a, it's hereditary and the name is a little bit of a strange moniker, sclerosis. It should almost be called otoporosis at any rate. Otosclerosis, let's look at the audiogram here on this picture so that we can explain things because it's, it's, it's a unique pathology but it also gives rise to a unique audiogram. Across the top here re are represented pitches or frequency. Low C, middle C, high C on a piano in music and octaves going higher as we move to the right. These are the seven different frequencies that are typically tested in a hearing test. These numbers going down the, the side here represent decibels from minus 10, super sensitive hearing, down all the way to 120. Now, otosclerosis is a conductive hearing loss, not a sensory neural hearing loss, because it's a pathology of the middle ear. Pathologies, as, as you know, of the outer and middle ears cause a blockage of a, a, a mechanical blockage of the conduction of sound to the holy grail being the cochlea because it's all about the cochlea. The outer ear just helps to gather sound and so does the middle, but it's delivered to the hair cells of the cochlea and that's where the real work begins. At any rate, otosclerosis being a pathology of the middle ear renders about a moderate degree of hearing loss. The X's being the left ear, the O's being the right ear. You can see it's taken around 50-ish decibels for the person to just barely hear the tone with the right ear and same under headphones with the left ear. So hearing is done first as we know under headphones each ear done separately. You can see that the hearing levels are similar for both ears in this particular case. But then when we tested by bone conduction, now we're looking at these different indications here. Bone conduction means we take a sound oscillator, a headband, and a little box is worn and placed on the mastoid bone right behind the ear. Now we deliver the tones now through that head bone and that bone oscillator and we're testing the person's hearing sensitivity that way again and we can see here that it took far fewer decibels for the person to hear by bone conduction than it did by air conduction or headphones that's the classic indicator of a conductive hearing loss meaning it's not sensory neural not hair cell related now, otosclerosis, before we carry on, it can be bilaterally symmetrical. It can be the same in both ears, but often it's worse in one ear than in the other ear. This, this is showing you merely for the sake of illustration. But at any rate, these bone thresholds, the level it took to hear by bone, they have a unique trajectory. Notice they go down slightly to 2,000 cycles or 2,000 hertz and then rise again. That particular configuration is known as Carhartt's notch. Carhartt, C-A-R-H-A-R-T-S, named after Raymond Carhartt, the father of audiology. Now, he published an article on otosclerosis, and it remains one of the classics in audiological literature. And it's only otosclerosis that could teach us this. What is the origin of this unique 
configuration. Does that really mean a little bit of hair cell damage in the cochlea? It doesn't, okay? It's merely an artifact of the way we test bone conduction. If this loss was sensory neural, then the, air, the, 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 the thresholds under headphones, the hearing levels under headphones would be what they are, and the bone conduction hearing would be the same thing. It wouldn't be better. It would be the same. And that would show a sensory neural hearing loss because no matter how we delivered the sound, whether through headphone or through the oscillator on the mastoid, the hearing levels wouldn't get any better. Well, that indicates cochlear hair cell origin. This is a conductive loss because hearing by air conduction is what it is, and by bone conduction, it's better. But it's the unique shape we want to address here. Carhartt's notch. Why? The reason why is because for optimal, perfectly normal bone conduction hearing, there are three players distortional bone conduction, inertial bone conduction, and osseotympanic bone conduction. Distortional bone conduction means how much was the cochlea activated with the oscillator placed on the mastoid bone? How much did we excite the hair cells? Inertial bone conduction is different. Think of the middle ear ossicles. They are connected to the skull by way of ligaments. And because of this, when the skull is vibrated with that little box behind the ear, the middle ear ossicles are vibrating a little bit later. There's an inertia to them. They're not vibrating right with the skull. They're vibrating with a bit of a lag in time behind the skull. And that little bit of lag where they're moving a little bit behind helps to push the stapes foot plate in and out of the oval window, thus helping to improve bone conduction hearing. Also, the third element, osseotympanic, refers to this. When the, when the oscillator is wiggling the skull, presenting the tone to the inner ear, there, there's a tiny column of air moving in and out of the ear canal. The skull is moving ever so slightly, and that little column of air is pushing against the eardrum, pushing against the ossicles, pushing the stapes in and out of the oval window. Well, now back to otosclerosis. With otosclerosis, the bones are fused to the skull because of that soft, porous growth of bone around the foot plate of the stapes. So now the, there is no more inertial contribution to bone conduction hearing. There is no longer that little column of air, osseotympanic contribution to bone conduction because the bones are now fused to the skull. And what happens here is that you've lost that love and feeling of inertial contribution. You've lost osseotympanic contributions and all you're left with is distortional bone conduction. And the resonance of the middle ear ossicles, they resonate at 2000 hertz. Therefore, the loss will be found most at 2000 hertz. This again does not show a slight loss of hearing of, because of damage to hair cells. No, rather it's an artifact. It's an artifact of the way we test by bone conduction. Carhartt's notch is an artifact of bone conduction, of the way we do bone conduction. Because of the unique pathology offered by otosclerosis, however, only otosclerosis itself could have shown us that. Thanks for listening. See you next time.